Peace and blessings be granted upon all my brothers and sisters out here in this world. All glory given to the Most High Yah. Be grateful for his long suffering. Be grateful for his mercy. Be grateful for his grace. Be grateful for his hands of preservation and his healing hands. All his love that he has rendered unto his children. All glory given to the Most High Yah. Blessed be his name forever. Peace and blessings be appointed to all my brothers and sisters out there in the world. It is your brother on this April 13th coming April 13th, about 10, 21 or so. Your brother, I'm just coming off of the nine o'clock prayer hour. Shouts out to all my brothers and sisters who have joined in spirit to pray on the regards of all the ailments that's in this world and all the people who are lost in this world in the behalf of their families and all that pertains to their life. We love you and we thank you. Constantly come to this nine o'clock prayer hour, my family. The only night that you know your brother Jehosa, the night that I we don't do it, family, is Sabbath night, family, because you need to be with your father all day, every day, in meditation. I tell you like this, family, coming up off the Sabbath weekend, I learned that from King Hezekiah and Isaiah that there's two types of men, family. There's a man who walks in pride. And there is a man who walks in honor. So as I set this question before you today, I ask you, family, what, what, what type of man are you? What type of woman are you? Are you a woman bound down by pride? Or do you walk honorably as an honorable man doing anything and everything that they see fit right in God's eyes? Family, it's only two type of men and women in, in this world. Either you, you are prideful, boastful person. Are you a person that walks in integrity and dignity and honor, family? And your brother Jehoshaphat Israel, I'm all about honor, family. I know that I don't need no type of things of being pride, prideful. I know your father, Yah, he even hates a person with a prideful look. And that's them people with them stuck up faces. The kids you not, you know what I'm saying? With them stuck up faces. Oh, I'm so hard. Oh, I'm so tough. Oh, I got so much money. Oh, I'm so better than you. They, they walk around with those faces on. And God doesn't like it, family. He does not like it. And he knocks them people all the way low. You see them today? They're up all high, boastful, and, and their prideful behavior. The next time you see them, God now took their feet under, off from under them. And they're knocked all the way down low. So come Coming up off this Sabbath weekend from learning from Isaiah and learning from Hezekiah. King Hezekiah was an honorable man, family. Every single thing that he did with his life was to honor your father who is in heaven. Yeah, to honor him with his whole complete life, just like Isaiah family. So what do you do with this knowledge? Do you take it and disregard it and toss it away or do you obtain it and use it in your own daily life? It has already been written. God will he will humble those who have a haughty heart and who has who are prideful. He will humble them, family. I, I, I live my life and I'm not trying to toot my own whistle or anything like that. But all of these constructs of these principles of these precept upon precept this is the life that i have chosen to live so your brother on this side of the world i choose to be honorable that's more important than how i see my other brothers and sisters out here in this world and i'm not talking about direct related blood i'm talking about my people far as hebrewic people over here in north america family i took up off of this weekend that my life, family, your life and everybody that you know, family, was paid for with a price and the blood of the precious lamb. And as you look at all the rich people that's in this world, either it be Bill Gates or Donald Trump or or uh, Oprah or all the rich folks, family, if you took all of them people and you took all the assets of all the funds of all the riches all of them, family, all of them. I mean, every rich person in every single country and every single nation on the face of this earth. If you took all their riches, family, and put it in the bank, it still would not be more important as the blood of the precious lamb of Yahshua. You call him Jesus Christ of Yahshua, family. It's, it's, there's nothing 
else that can pay that price off, family. And you was paid, you was paid for it, and you was purchased for it, and the blood of the precious lamb, family. That statement alone gives me the sensation of so much joy and glad heart inside of my heart to know that your father, he cared for you so much to where he sent his son to die on your behalf to get some type of recognition back with him. Some type of submission from you, obedience from you to him, family, paid for and delivered. As I step away from the Sabbath weekend, and I don't know if y'all know this about y'all brother, but your brother, I'm like a spiritual antenna over here, family, in this world. My eyes have been opened. Thine eyes have been illuminated to the truth, family. And all of this evil I see kicking up like a windstorm all around me. It can be seen, it can be felt, family. And coming up off this weekend, I don't want to say that I let demons burden me. I don't want to say that I let them bring me to sorrows. But in the back of my mind, family, a fear, family, was there. I'm not going to lie to y'all, family. I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and play games and lie to the children of the Most High Yah, those who choose to serve him, the saints of this earth. I'm not going to lie to you, family. And the backwards of my mind, it was a fear, family. It was a fear of those things that was unseen. But coming up off the, the, the weekend, family, coming up off the Sabbath weekend, family, let me, let me change my pick real quick, family. My bad. My bad. Oh, my bad. Hold on, family. My bad. I'm up over here messing up, acting like I don't know where I'm going and stuff. My bad. And change my pick up real quick. My bad. Coming up off the, the, the Sabbath weekend, family. And, you know, we're supposed to learn something and we're supposed to get something woven inside of us of a remembrance every single week. And my mind has been plagued on this one, just this one statement, family, of what I just said previous, family. You were bought for, paid off in the precious blood of the lamb. The most scariest thing about this life, family, is having to learn the Lord turn to you and say, depart from me. I do not know you. That is more scarier than the devil. That is more scarier than people that would try to slay me. You know what I'm saying? They only got one shot to do it, family. You know what I'm saying? They only got one shot to do it. People that will cause me harm are any funky, foul, stink presence of demons that would be festering around me, family. I told you I'm like a spiritual antenna, and I know, family. You know what I'm saying? And I know. What did your brother teach you so long ago? When, when evil, dark presence forces come into your house... When you are all alone, you should be able to de detect that that sense of that being being around you. And they come with a stench, family. Demons smell very bad, family. I hope you know that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just letting you know, family. If you didn't know before, now you know, family. And with those presents coming abunt to me, with all they evil and whatever seeds of doubt or discouragement that they try to plant inside, or if it's just a seed of fear, family. When them evil forces would come to me and, and frighten me, family, and scare me, that little that little bit of doubt, family, that's in the back, in the caverns of my, of my mind, family, they played upon it. But coming up off this Sabbath weekend, there is nothing more terrifying to your brother Jehoshaphat Israel than the fact that the Lord would tell a person to depart from him, for he does not know them. That is more scarier than the devil, family. That's more scarier than a demon, a demonic forces of people casting spells and witchcraft and voodoo and, and the robber man or, or a, a bad accident. Family, all of those things have been washed away from me. The mainly th and the demons, they know it, too, family. They know it, family, because I've been in prayer over it. And the most terrifying thing that I can concept in the human flesh as a person living in this reality is the Lord saying, depart from me. That's more scarier than Satan. He don't got no holes on me like that anymore, family. All them demons that will come pay me a visit to try to plant doubts of seeds of fear, of discouragement. 
the Lord saying that to me is more terrifying than any demon that will crawl up out the pit of hell, family. Any demonic forces of powers in the darkness that's moving in this world, that is more terrifying to me than anything that's in this world. That's what I took off your Sabbath weekend and to be an honorable man. What is an honorable man, Jehosa? We should know inside of ourselves what is right and what is wrong and what is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing to do. And your brother, I live to please the most high. So I choose to be an honorable man and all my decision making and all of my actions, family. King Hezekiah was a very honorable man to the most high. Yah, and he lived to please him. Uh, Hezekiah taught me that. When you doubt God. You bring on curses on your own self, family. You really do, family. When you doubt God, when you are ye of little faith, that still comes with a price because whatever God want to do for you, you want to you want to doubt God and then do it your own way. And then how can you get over the whole hill, family? How can you get over the mountain, family? How can you get across the sea your own way? So when you don't do it God's way, when you be ye of little faith, it comes with a price. And that same price, a lot of people are not willing to play it because they miss the blessing itself, family. They miss the blessing. When King Hezekiah got scared of the Persian army destroying Jerusalem. He went out. He listened to what the people said. The people said, well, you know, Hezekiah, you should. Oh, uh, we want to live. Hezekiah, we want to live. They're going to kill us. They're going to kill us. Hezekiah, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, you need to go into the treasury and pull up all your monies and give it to the Persian army. That's what the, that's what they told Hezekiah and fear family. If he had faith in the most high, yeah, he would have never did that family. It comes with a price. Now, Hezekiah, he didn't all the way give up on his faith on God. He was listening to the people family and the people got him shipwrecked family. They got him in troubles family because he could have kept all that gold of all that silver. That was given to a king that was going to try to kill them anyway, family. Anyway, when you doubt God, it comes with a price, family. It really does, family. When you be ye of little faith, it comes with a price. I'll give you an example. God told brother Jim to hold off. Don't go over there doing that stuff right now. Just hold off for a little bit of season and I'm going to tighten you up and I'm going to help you. Brother Jim, he wanted to do it his way. He wanted to go about things his way and it didn't have a good come come out of it. When he went up over there, it was all bad, family. It was all bad for Brother Jim. But if he would have waited just a little bit longer and waited for the hand of uh, the interceding from the Most High Yah, then Brother Jim would have got his blessings, family. Brother Jim went up over there blindly, not knowing what to do. When if he would have just waited on the father for a plan of how to do something, family, I, 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 I'm stepping off of the Sabbath weekend knowing that to doubt God, it comes with a price. It, you, you automatically get a curse with that family. You automatically do. So I'm telling you, family, to hold fast to whatever your father has told you, family. This is the week of remembrance to remember, family, all the promises that God told you personally. We're not talking about the covenant, new or old. We're not talking about the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the limitations. We're not talking about those things, family. We're talking about the Most High Yah who whispered in your ear this seed of faith that he wanted to grow into you for you to cling on and wait on, family. God, he, he doesn't make promises that he does not keep. Yah is the only one who in this world that you will ever know that will stay true to his word 100%. And as you look at your past to your present, to the middle, to where you, you're at now, family, I want you to bring into to remembrance all of 
his promises. We're not talking about the word of truth, the word of life, the word of justice. We're not talking about the Holy Scriptures, family. We're not talking about his laws, his statutes, his commandments, his limitations, his judgments. We're not talking about that either, family. We're talking about the promises that was given to you by the Most High Yah. This is the week to bring in remembrance all those same promises that he gave to you, family, and to hold fast and for he is true, family. He is true to us and he is true to his word, family. This is the week of remembrance, family. I want you to remember all the things that your father has told you. Now for today, you know your brother, I got my sanction anointed time here in the sanctuary and I'm deep in studies right now, family, so I have to put forth old studies that I did not get a chance to get over, like these things that your father wanted me to bring before you. And I had a couple of side notes that I wanted your mind to kind of fester on, to bring some, some illumination to light some of these things that was kept from you in the dark. Now, you know me, family, I can't bring revival cannot family i cannot revive i can't even bring revelation your father will do that for us in this sit down family but the first thing that he wants me to minister over that we have to 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 preach over just for a little bit family i want you to go to the 10 commandments family and we're just going to roughly go down these things of the 10 commandments but before we do that a lot of people been asking me, they've been asking me, they'd be like, well, Jehosa, what do you feel about the pandemic, brother? Well, Jehosa, what do you think about the corona disease? Okay, I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you what I think, family. But none of this has nothing to do with what your father has told me personally. I'm just telling you, remember what I told y'all so long ago, family, when I told you no man or no woman can understand God. But it is up to us to understand why he is doing certain things, family. That's on us, family. That is, that's not on him like that, family. He'll show you, family. It's up to you to figure out what he's doing, family. So I'll tell you what I think and then I'll tell you what I think he's doing. And remember None of this is biblical and none of this come directly from him to me for me to tell you. I'm just telling you what I think about what he is doing. These are not things that he told me personally, family. Now, first. You can go to the book of. Well, hold on. Am I on the right? No, hold up. Hold up, family. I'm on my wrong page. See, it's, it pays to be in order up over here. Now, you can go to Leviticus chapter 25 if you want to, but I just want to tell you what I think of why. Now, six years you shall sow your land and gather in its produce, but the seventh year you shall not, you shall let it rest and lie so it can feed the poor of your people. Now, hold on, family. Hold on, family. Hold on. It was another. It was another picture I want to put up there. So six years you shall sow your fields and six years you shall prune your vineyards and gather its fruits. But the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard so why do you say that jehosa why do you say that family if you look at this world that we live on family we it's been men of war killing each other for how long now family you can't even put no tight on it. you can't even from modern civilization all the way to our past family and bce family and a b and b c e family there has been war family if you look at the last 75 years of earth history family there's no, there's been nothing but bloodshed on this earth family that's all it's been family war of world war one world war two uh afghanistan iraq the desert storm you, you can you can just keep on going family that's just america family what about everybody else family fighting and killing on this earth family 
What did I just read to you? Six years you shall sow your fields and six years you shall you shall prune your vineyards and gather its fruits. But the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest. Family, this earth ain't had no time to rest, family. It has not family. It has not time to have no type of rest family at all. Doesn't God have the right? Doesn't Yah, the almighty creator, has the right to get tired of mankind family? Doesn't doesn't he have that right family? If you said he didn't, that means that you're a judger of God family. And we are not family. We can't judge God for nothing that he's doing. He is the almighty family. Whatever he says goes. Doesn't God have the right to get tired of all the blood shed that's on this earth, family? Look at it, family. Look at man, family. They they build weapons of mass destructions, family, every single year, family. It's a new type of gun. It's a new type of way of killing somebody. And all in and, and simple family back in the day, all they had was sticks and stones and rocks, family. That's all they had, family, to make a bow and arrow or bust you in your head with a rock, family. That's it, family. But we of this modern generation, this generation, death is so, so damn convenient, family. Because every year people are devised in different ways and different strategies of killing. What is it? Chemical warfare? Is it biological warfare? What is it, family? Is they trying to kill the vegetables in that region and the plants so the people will die off? There's so many ways of destruction now. And this earth itself has seen so much death, so much carnage, so much blood in it, family. Soaked into the land, family. It's no different than the solemn day of rest. God gets gets tired of his family. He does family. He gets tired of us family. Okay. With this plan that he has given, he said, okay, earth, y'all ain't going to stop killing each other. Y'all ain't going to stop with all this bloodshed. I released this pandemic in the earth and that will make you go home and stay in your house. So you won't come outside and be doing all of that killing, all of that murder, all of that rape, all of that theft. You won't be doing all of that because you'll be in the house. Now, as you look at people that's in this world, they ain't slowed down on nothing, family. They still killing family. They still robbing people, family. They still raping people. They still devising ways of tricking people out of their money. They're still hurting. Look at our people and look at them in the street, family. Look at them in the street, family. And look at the things that they're doing in the streets and they're supposed to be in the house, family. God needs a rest of the murder and the carnage and the blasphemous against his name family he sh he put a whole pandemic throughout the whole world just to slow man down from his death and his murder and his killing and people still don't see it but it's so much blood soaked into the land family it needs a rest no different than the sabbath family no different than you going out to your vineyard and you sitting up there pruning your vineyard for seven years. One year, you're going to have to let that alone. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to leave that alone, family. That's what he wants this year, family. That's why you hear him every time on the TV and they talk about, oh, we don't know when it's going to be over. Maybe it's the summertime. Maybe it's when it, start, uh, when it starts warming up outside and stuff, family. He wants a rest of all the carnage of the mayhem of the blood rest. And you see with this pandemic, that's not stopping people from doing anything, family. They're still out there doing every single ungodly thing that they would do if it wasn't just a regular day. But it slowed man down a little bit, family, of all of his carnage, family. Let's read another scripture, family. See, I don't, I don't, I don't think you're hearing me, family. I don't think you're hearing me, family. Listen, family. Hide yourself as if were for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth, will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. That's what the earth is right now. She's tired of your blood, family. You know what I'm saying? She's tired of it. You know what I'm saying? Even the Lord of hosts seen that, family. He's seen that. The, the world so tired of drinking in the blood of slain of innocent people, family. Now, what did it say in the scripture to hide yourself? Do you think that stopping people from going outside causing all of this, all of this hardship? Of all this chaos, of all this confusion, of all this deception, of all this cruelty that comes off of the display of their actions and their tongue. What did the scripture say again, family? Hide yourself as if for a little while 
a little moment until indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. Will all the earth will also disclose her blood and will not cover her slain anymore. That's where we at right now, family. God came off of his throne and came down here and judged this planet. He said in this word, family, to go hide yourself, to stay up in the house. That's not stopping people from coming outside, family. It's not, family. It is not, family. His hand of indignation of them being out there and, and contracting this virus and dying, family. That's not scaring them, family. They still look, look at your people, family. And I'm not just throwing uh, Hebrews and just the pot by itself. I'm talking about everybody, family. But look at your people, family. They stay home for two, three days and then they got to go somewhere and be with four or five hundred people that a couple of them got that disease and it's spreading around family they're not going to be protected because they're not even hiding their cells right now family they're not family they're out in the world and his fiery hand of his indignation of his punishment to to inflict the inhabitants of the earth is all around us family they didn't want to listen the first time when he said go hide yourself for a little while until my hand of punishment is off mm -mm, family it's a reason why, family. It is a reason why he said he's only going to save a remnant, family. Only a remnant, family. And I'm not talking about Noah and his household with it only being six or eight people being saved, family. But if judgment was outside that door in the form of a virus, half of your people is not going to make it, family, because they're not going to heed the words of the most high. Yah, family, they're not going to do that, family. What was written? Hide yourself as if were for a little moment until indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the, in the inhabitants of the earth. Will, the earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. That's where we at right now, family. Just like your brother said, the earth needs a day of rest. So that's what I think, family. That's how I feel. And that's what I think. Remember what your brother told you, family. No man understands God like that. But it's up to each and every one of us to figure out why he did what he did. And from what he did, what he did to what he is doing is telling me what he's doing, family. And why? Why is he doing? Do I understand him 100 percent of the way? No man can do that, family. No man or no woman, no prophet. No man can do that, family. But it's still up to us to figure out why, family. Why is he allowing this? Why did he let this come to pass for? It's no different than what I'm telling you, family. Six years you shall sow your fields and six years you shall prune your vineyards and gather its fruits. But the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest. The world has not had a rest on blood, shed, murder, killing the innocent blood being soaked into the land, family. It has not been family, not a one time family, not even for a little bit. For the last 500 years, the innocent have been slain and their blood has been soaked into the land. And I don't care what country, what region, what state, what peninsula you might be on in this world, family. It is still blood and war and carnage in this world. And it has not stopped family, not for 100 years. It hasn't been 100 years of peace on this earth, family. It hasn't even been 50 years of peace on this earth, family. It's been a violent war, a struggle against good and evil. The innocent, the, the clean, the unclean, the dastardly, the evil, the wicked for the last 500 years now, family. And God got tired and he wants a rest of the bloodshed, family. But you see, that's not slowing any evil people down from doing evil. They still stealing. They still robbing. They still killing. They still raping. They still murdering people, family out there in this world. But do as what the world, what the, the word of Yah say, go hide yourself, family, hide yourself, family right now, family, hide yourself from the world, family, for all them people left outside, family. I don't know if they're going to be able to escape his fiery hand of indignation. I don't think so, family. I don't, family. Okay, family, before, and that's just what I think of what I feel, family, for that, that given sense and time of what's the, the pandemic that's happening around this earth right now, family. That's just, 
how what I think and what I feel of what he's doing, family. Remember, it's our job to study him, to learn him, to figure him out. It's not his job for him to learn us. He made us, family. What? How? How? How ridiculous would that sound for someone that made you to have to learn who the heck you are? Uh-uh, family. The shoe is on the other fit. You have to learn who he is and what he wants from all of us, family. Now, for some reason, family, people think that the Bible is like a book of poetry or something, family. That's what they when when some people when they look at the Bible, family, the word of truth. The word of knowledge, the word of life, the word of salvation. When they look at the Bible, they look at it like it is uh, like, well, you know, the Bible, you know, that's just some that's some, just some more poetry. And, you know, that's just some some metaphors that I'm not going to want to live by. I, I can't do it, Jehoshua. For some reason, they think the Bible is poetry. It is not family. It is not family. Since they think the Bible is poetry, I wrote some poetry and I want you to listen to it. But. My poetry is influenced by the word of God, but this is poetry, family. I'll read some poetry to you, family, but a poem, family, poetry, family. I'll read some that I that I made so long ago, family. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you when I wrote this, family. It's been so long ago, family. But the Bible itself is not a book of metaphors or poetry. It is a way of salvation. It is a way of life. It is an instrument and a tool to gain knowledge, to gain wisdom, to gain strength. To take away all the doubts and confusion of this world, to shed them like a snake would shed his skin, family. It is a way out of the, the cruelty of this world and the heart of man. So let me read some poetry that I, that I wrote so long ago. I didn't put a date on it, my bad. I hope the volume is up so you can hear me. A man seeks to control the natural. Because the body is but sand, made up of the earth, in grain as the salt of the land, fixed on pleasure to pass the time, for life is fleeing, consumed with only wants, not observing the power of the supernatural, to each his own, to become a king in his own right, to conquest one another is his life. To bring down low, to stand on top of the bodies of dead man bones. Victory in his eyes when the enemy is oneself. Not to acknowledge one place. The thirst for the quest to tame the unknown. Devising plans in one's heart to make foolish what is good and everlasting. Deceived by the picture of black. That snared one's soul as a slave, taking on needs that are not needed, empty of logging, for more death by being consumed, drunken with power, tricked by one's self-importance, as be has become the jailer and I'm sorry, become the jailer and peace is the key that was discarded, not found in a man for, desi for desires. His desires was the waves of the sea, dragging one deeper into to be adrift without with. I'm sorry, with not having love as an anchor, which is a compass to find one's way overtaken by the raging storm. That is a man's heart. Dark as the night, without the sun rays of the truth, which is love. In concord with the wind, only being blew away. The eyes of evil to be planted in the soil of the mind. To choke out and kill the seed of the people of the world. Happy for one moment and dying with a smile. This is the heart of man. Now, family, that that is a poem, family. That is poetry, family. The words of life. It is not family. It is not family at all. The Bible that is sitting in your house is your salvation. If you can only hearken to the truth coming up off family, coming up off the Sabbath weekend. I just I just want to convict the hearts of my brothers and my sisters out there that. You say you love your children. If you say you love your children, then from your from your brother's death part of my heart, I ask family that you get them baptized, family. 
Now, I'm not promoting that this is the right way to do anything. I just wanted you to look at it, family. You know what I'm saying? I'm not promoting anything of that nature of this is the way you should do it. I want you to find a good man or a good man that believes in God. Preferably a preacher that you trust, that you have tested throughout the time to know what type of man that he is to get your children baptized, family. Now, that old man in the Catholic Church, he's wrong for slapping that baby, family. I'm not asking you to do all that. But if you love your children, if you love them the way that you say that you love them, you will get them baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You will teach them about his word. If you love them, if you love them, like you say, a lot of parents sit there and say that they love their children, but they never teach them about God and they never get them baptized. Family, that is not love to me. Family, that is not love for we all know the only way you can enter into God's kingdom is to be born of water all over again. Family to be baptized. Family. The only way, family. And there's so many different people out here in the world who say, oh, you know, I love God. but well, you know, I love Jesus. Did you get your kids baptized? I don't know about that, Jehovah. I don't know. Or brother, brother or sister, if you have never been baptized yourself, I am pleading with you, my brother. I'm pleading with you, my sister, to go get yourself a good man of God to baptize you in water, family. For that is the only way you can enter into your father's kingdom. Now, this other one right here, family. I told you, family, when 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 you baptize, like if I baptize you, family, you're it's going to get this. It's going to feel like your whole life has been reset all over again. Family, you should feel a difference. Soon as you come up out that water, family, you should feel a difference in yourself. Family, your whole world should start anew. You should see God in this world when you when you. How can I put this? And excuse me from getting boggled up on my words here, family. But when you go down in that water and you come up, it's like being washed, cleansed all over again. You see this whole world all new. If I put my hands on you and baptize you, you're going to feel the holiness of God on you. You're going to feel a different. You're going to feel a change. You're going to feel a new. So I plead with my brothers and sisters out there. If you have never been baptized, I suggest you to find a holy man of God. And the only way that you can determine a holy man of God is on his character. Does his character change? Preachers that are foul people that try to get over, be trying to have sex with all the women in church, you know what I'm saying? Be stealing people money. They're found out. They can only do that for a certain period of time. And God has promised through his own world to bring the darkness into light. They will be revealed, family. They will be scoffed and made ashamed of. They will be public mockery, family. They will be a display of what you're not supposed to do when you hold the, the, this dishonor in your hand to lead God's people to his truth, family. They're found out, family. They are, family. I don't suggest you go to any of them, family. But a man that has proven himself throughout time, family, he doesn't change for the world. He doesn't go into what the narrative of what people are saying and what they OK with and what's OK with him. A man of God like me, I'm not going to change, family. My foundation is the word, family. And that same preacher, that old minister that's been preaching Bless them all, family, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Father. You know I pray for them all the time, Father. That same man, that old preacher that will not change to conform into this world is the one you want to have lay hands on you. There's so many different people out there, family, that lay hands on people just to curse them, family, just to put hexes and cast spells on them and voodoo on them, family. But they should be known through the word of their actions of the things that they're doing. A true man of God will never change for this world or nobody in it. The only thing that's going to change him is what God is telling that man. That's about it. The only thing that can change me, family, is what God is telling me, family. Whatever he says, that's what's going to go, family. So I plead with you, family. I plead with you. If you have never been baptized, I suggest you highly do so now, family. If you have never had your children baptized, I plead with you, my brothers. I plead with you, my sisters. If you love them, you will get them baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, 
Okay, this last one too, family. Okay, I was watching this one, family. Okay, you heard what I feel and what I think about the corona and the COVAC virus. Now listen to what this preacher have to say about it. And excuse me for laughing. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, family. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, family. You know what I'm saying? I just had to. You, okay, now you seen what I said about it, and that's how the old preacher feel about it. What do you think about it? How do you feel about it? And you know, you know how your brother is, you know what I'm saying? I'll be looking for people who be faking up on God, family. I really do, family. I'll be looking up for people for faking up God. I ain't going to say nothing about the man. I ain't going to say nothing about him at all, family, at all, family. But that was hilarious, family. It was, family. It was funny, family. I'm not going to say that when I look into that man's eyes, I see something that should not be there. I'm not going to tell you what I see, family. But... True people of God, you should be able to extinguish who is true and who is false. And as I look at that man preaching the word of God, family, I don't know about that man like that. I don't, family. Okay, now let's get back into our structure for today because this is what your father asked me to do, family. He asked me to go through all of these things, all these things that we're going through. He asked, I got my sanction anointed time now, family, and your brother is here with you. Now, I would just like you to pull up the Ten Commandments. You can either go to your Bible or go to the computer, your laptop, your phone, whatever you might have right now I would like you to pull up the Ten Commandments because your father would like me to go over these things, family. That's what he that's what he said, family. Okay, first, first one, family. I am the Lord your God. Thou shall have no other gods before me. That was the commandment, family. People think that they are God. The government, famous people, actors, singers, rappers, athletic people. Some people think that they're God. Some people, God, is their sex, is their drugs, is their money, is their gain, is their policies and political stand. That's how some people look at the, the, the first commandment, family. Look at look at sister in the back. You cannot sit here and tell me that the, the people that you know don't serve all these other things, family. What she got on there? She got a picture of Tupac. She got a, famous people, family. Some people famous. They serve famous people. They look at famous people no different than they look at that they should be looking at God, family. Some people is music. Some people is money. Some people is entertainment. Some people is fashion. Some people is sport, family. What did God say, family? I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. So you have to really watch what you're doing in this world, family. How much do you love that stuff, family? Look at how people are. People think some people think that they're God, family. Some people would like to think that the government is God, family. Actors, God, family. Singers, rappers, famous people. Athletes, family. The gangs, family, they worship that blue or red rag or that gang no different than they should be worshiping God, family. Some people worship politics, family. You got to come out of her, family. You got to come out of her, family. I know a lot of my, my people would not like to hear them words, but it is no different than the word of God, family. Some people serve all this stuff and whatever you serve, you're looking to it as your God, family. And my brothers out there on the block, my brothers in the hood, they worship that hood no different than how should they should be worshiping god they love that gang more than they love god family that's a problem family my brothers and sisters up over there that look at boxers and sports people and football players like they're like they're important they're not important family god is the only one who is important you cannot put nobody in his spot in his place in your life what was the commandment? I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. 
They ain't got to worry about gods because some of them think that they are God, family. Some of them worship their own selves, family, and their own wants. They're not denying the things in this world and they give into it, family. At once upon a time, family, I was no different. I looked at the actors and the singers and the rappers and the famous people, even the damn government, family, even the gangs, family. Sex and drugs and money, family, all of these things people worship, family. And if you're putting anything in his place, family, I suggest that you take that out of your life. Me and your brothers and sisters, we're praying for you. This is true. But it is up to each and every one of us to fix ourselves to be worthy to stand in his light, family. And we cannot put no nothing, nobody. I don't even care if it's your mama, your daddy, your children. You cannot put that in God's place, family. What was his commandment number two? Where is it on here? My bad, family. The no making of idols, family. God don't want you having no idols nowhere around you at all. People wear chains of crosses. They have pictures in their house. Some of them carve up their bodies with pictures of the Lord. Now, hold on, family. I'm sorry. They people wear chains of the cross. They have pictures and medallions of the Lord. They cu they cut and and they cut and tattoo their bodies. Now, he said to bind his laws and his commandments on the doorposts of your walls, write them on the tablets of your heart to wear them on your garments, the fringes of your clothes and on your gates. Now, we don't we don't need no picture of no Lord. We don't have to have the Lord on our wall. We don't have we don't have any idol worship. OK, now I'm just talking about the, the normal people at their house. But as you can see, some people around the world, they really serve. They really worship idols, family. If you think that I'm playing, family, all you have to do is go to a Catholic church, family. And they can say I'm wrong for it, family. But this is what the scripture said, family. What did God say? No, make no no idols, family. They up in there worshiping the um, Jesus mama. Mother Mary, they up in there worshiping all of those, the, the saints and the, the popes of the church and stuff, got figurines and pictures of them. OK, we understand that. That's blatantly in your face. You shouldn't be worshiping no idols like that. But what about when you come to your home, family? People be sitting up there. They be cutting up pictures of Jesus all up on their chest and crosses. We're not supposed to do that. They got they got chains on their neck. They got a cross. That's still idol worship, family. We don't we don't need God said to have faith in him. You know what I'm saying? You don't need no cross on your neck, family. And they'd be like, well, this brother, this gives me strength. No, it doesn't. You're lying to yourself. God is the only one that could ever give a man or a woman strength. We don't need it, family. We don't need no tattoos, and no Jesus. We don't need no crosses around our neck. And, you know, I'm learning, family. I'm learning because once upon a part of time, I said that I can't wait to give me a Jesus piece. You know, I throw myself in the fire. My hand is up, family. I throw myself in the fire. Ain't nobody above reproach, family. Ain't nobody above correction. And from what, what, what Job taught me, Job taught me that I can live my life doing good my whole life. God is still going to correct me, family. He's still going to correct me. Even though I'm living my life to the fullest point to where I'm not trying to diso disobey him and be obedient to him, I'm still going to error, family. I'm still going to make some mistakes along the way, and he's going to have to chastise me to put me back into order. There is no man or no woman in this world that will live their life being men and women of God, and God won't chastise them. God always has to chastise us to ground us back into his truth. We don't need no crosses. We don't need no pictures in our house of the Lord, family. And, and a lot of people, they'd be like, what do you mean, Jehoshaphat? This is what I do for a living. This is how I make my bread. This is how I get my butter. This is how I get my honey. Brother, you're getting over on the people. God don't want us having no images of the Lord in our house. If we have to have some imagery of God, he already told us what to do, family. He told us to write his commandments on the tablets of our heart, to wear them on our garments and on our fringes and on our clothes and to put them on our doorposts and our gates. So if you want to have something with the Lord, family, 
some saying that gives you power, that gives you strength. Go ahead and put that on the gate before you even get to your house, family. Go ahead and put that on your door for when people knock on your door and, and you open before they, you even open it. It's already scripture on the door of how you are living and what you cherish and what you hold dear to your heart. Family is the word of his laws, his statutes, his commandments, his limitations. He even wants us to wear them on our clothes. Family. Now, where does that give in to me putting a tattoo of the Lord on me? Family. I'm pretty sure that it would be more better for me to put the Lord's commandment on my body than to put a tattoo of anything, family, of anything else on my. And, you know, I didn't make mistakes, but this is all a learning process, family. You got to come out of the dark, family, and step into the light. When you have been given the truth, will you hold fast into that same truth or will you go out with the illness of the world and give into its ways of its wants, of its desires? Which one is it, family? You have been given the truth on it, family. He wants you to wear them on your clothes, brother. He wants you to wear them on your clothes, sister. He wants you to put them on your doorpost and your gates and your wall of your house. We don't need no imagery of God. We just need his words to live upon and to grow faith. We don't need no idol worship. And you see how bad these people can be, family. They serve that thing that they, they carry in. Only time I ever seen people carrying stuff like that. If it's a, it's a great king, family, and that thing can't see, it can't talk, it can't move, and it's made out of stone. That is not God, family. No idol worship, family. Let's move forward to the next one. And I can find my, my good enough picture for it. Third one, you shall not carry the name of the Lord your God in vain, family. You see how people is they cuss and bring shame to his name by cussing the father name to bring. They bring his name through the, mo the mud with using profane, blasphemy, laughing and degenerate use of his name with the disrespectful attitude that they have received from the world. We're not supposed to mock God. We're not supposed to shame his name. And if you want to look at a good example of somebody shaming his name, all you have to do is watch anything that comes out of Hollywood. They're constantly desecrating and mocking his name, family. OK, let's go to the people that's in your life, family, that will bring bad, offensive words even around God's name, family. They be saying all that hurtful stuff. I suggest that you get away from these people, that you plant your seeds of your truth that your father has delivered unto you inside of you. You can give that to them. But I suggest that you leave them alone because we don't even need to be around somebody that will curse God's name, that will disrespect his name, that will profane and blaspheme, take his name and run it in the mud and use it so profanely, so de degenerately like family, disrespect in the attitude family of how we talk about him. God name is supposed to be honored. It's supposed to be praised in your life. If you're around people and they can't praise his name, they can't honor his name. They curse his name family. And you don't need to you don't need to mix your soul of your spirit of your heart with people that would have so much distaste of anger, of aggression toward your towards your father's name, family. So what do you do, family? We live our life and we won't take the Lord name in vain. We will bless him in our darkest hour. We will bless him in our needs. We will bless him in our trials of our tribulations, of our afflictions. We will not curse him in any of these things, family. We will praise and we will bless and we will lift his name up. I cannot sit here before you today and say that the rest of mankind will do that, family. And you don't need them cursing God's name, bringing shame on him on you, family. I don't even tolerate that, family, at all, family. If I had a friend, and notice, like I said, if I had a friend that would disrespect God, I would tell him plainly and simple. I can't even be your friend. Well, Jehosa, why you can't be my friend, brother? Because you be disrespecting God's name. We're not having that, family. Not at all. Not even a little bit, family. Remove yourself. It's the reason why he said separate yourself and come out of her. Sometimes it's people, family. Sometimes it's family members, family. Sometimes it's people that you know that have no respect for your father. His name needs to be praised. His name needs to be honored. 
His name needs to be magnified to the high heavens in which he stands. Um, all of Zion, blessed be Yah's name, for he is worthy. Throw your hands in the air, for you know you are blessed by Yah himself. All glory be given to Yah, for he is the only one who is worthy. Okay, what's the next commandment, family? And he just wanted me to go over these simple commandments. He did, family, because he knows that a lot of people can't follow them, family. It's sad, family. It's sad, family. And these things are so simple, family. So I want you to line yourself up with these commandments to see how you are doing. Number, number four, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. They be swearing, they be robbing, they be stealing, they be killing, they be thinking evil and be wicked, slanderous, mockers, scoffers and liars come forth out of their mouth, destroying people instead of picking them up. Yah is asking one day to be holy each week. And most people cannot do. They cannot go a day without evil and being hostile by their nature, void of any love. So that's the that's what God is asking from us, family. He asking for one day to be holy, family, to remember his holy Sabbath day. You already know what I'm going to tell you, family. On this holy day, we're trying our best not to speak any evil, not to think any evil. And not to say any evil, not to do any evil, doing no evil, speaking no evil and thinking no evil on this holy day and, and remaining holy for his holy day to worship him, to honor him, to love him, to be deep in meditation of his word, of all of his glory. Me and your brothers and sisters, we take out our time to do that every single week long family i don't need just the sabbath to be holy i'm trying to be holy all week long but you can best believe on this holy day i'm going over the top and i'm really beating myself down to make sure that i stay in alliance with what is asked of the most high god family what your brothers say not to think no evil not to speak no evil and not to do any evil. That is me and your brothers and sisters each week, family, each Friday night, family, till Saturday evening, which is the Sabbath, family. We're respecting him and knowing on the fact that we have to be holy in his eyes, family, for that day. The rest of the world, family, they're out there swearing, they robbing, they stealing, they killing, they thinking evil, they being wicked, they being slanderous, they're being mockers, they're being scoffer, they're telling lies, they're destroying people's lives. They can't even take one day day out of the madness of the ailment of the sickness of sin to be holy family and your father is asking you to remember his holy day and to keep it holy that's what he is asking out of all of us family each and every week family me and your brothers and sisters we own this every single day family every day it was last week family i had to remind myself i was like i was like jehosa Today is Thursday. It ain't the Sabbath, but I have my A-game on, family. It was Thursday and I was thinking the Sabbath, family. I was really going. I was like, man, I can't even go out. I can't even go out with y'all today. It's the Sabbath. And it was like, Lynn, it's, it's, it's Jehosa, it's Thursday. And I was like, oh, man, for real, man. I thought it was the Sabbath, man. I'm not playing around up over here, family. So your father wants you to remember his Sabbath day and to keep it holy each week that goes by. Y'all already know how I feel about this, family. God has a birthday. Each and every week, he does not look at time the way that you or I or any man could perceive or concept time, family. He doesn't look if one day to us is a thousand years to him, family. Come on now, family. Did I say it backwards? You know what I'm saying to you, family. He does not perceive time in the way that we look at time, family. He does not. One day in heaven is a thousand years down here, family. He doesn't see time like that. So each week that goes by, family, is the creation to him, family. It's the creation. It's like he made the heavens and the earth and all the known universe this week, family, this is the beginning of when he started doing everything right now, making all the universes, the sun, the stars, anything that you will see in the celestial, the terrestrial, outer space, deep space, all those things, including this earth is no different than the beginning of all time. This Monday, family, this Monday, right now, family, right now, family, he is looking at it is when he started everything. So on that day, he wants to rest. This is so important to him to where it would be like to you. It'd be like your birthday. You know how you feel on your birthday, family. You want some gifts 
and you want people to say happy birthday. That's the same thing, no different than your father that resides in heaven, family. He feels the same way. He wants your praise on his holy day, family. The day that he birthed this whole existence into reality. He wants your praise. That's the present that you brought to God's birthday party on the Holy Sabbath. That's how he looks at it, family. And remember, I'm only using the construct of what a man would feel about it. But I'm pretty close to what it is, family. And this is how he looks at it, family. What did he say? Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Why, family? Why? Because each week that goes by is no different than the beginning of all time, family. From the day one when he started making this universe, this earth. The seas, the mountains, the trees, the birds, the lions, the, the, the deer, the gazelle, the alligators, people, you know what I'm saying? Men, women, the oceans, the birds, all of the, the beasts of the field. Today is that day, family. All week long, family, is the beginning of all creation to God, family. That's why he rests each week on his holy sabbath as he did a good job this is how he's looking at each week family time doesn't mean anything to him family remember he lives outside of time family and he doesn't perceive time the way a man or a woman does family each week is the beginning of the universe to god from monday to saturday night family and he wants you to be holy on this holy day family don't be like the other people in this world that's too busy lying and cheating and stealing and mocking and scoffing and slandering people and destroying people's lives, being ungodlike and unholy in all of their actions when he wanted a day to rest, to be at peace and to glorify him, to praise him, to honor him. That is the gift that you give to God on this holy Sabbath day. All glory be given to Yah for he is worthy. Let's move to the next one. Honor your father and mother. People steal, they lie, they beat their parents, they shame them, they disrespect them. Their parents not showing any emotional stages of love towards their parents by being rebellious to the authority placed over them before they came in this world, being cursed on their own self. So your father, he wants us to respect our parents and give them love, even if they're not deserving of love. Even if your parents are disrespectful, they don't love God, they didn't made your life a living hell for your whole growing up in this world. God still wants you to love and respect your parents. Jehoshaphat! Jehoshua, why my mama, she ain't never no good, she ain't never been there for me, she made my life a living hell, Jehoshua! When you don't respect your parents, family, when you dishonor them, family, whatever, whatever that's on them, family, whatever curses that's on them, family, either it be disease, family, if it's suffering, family, you get a swap, family, you get a transfer, family, whatever. If your if your daddy was going to die from being ran over by a car and you hated your daddy, guess what? You just changed places with him and you're going to get hit by that damn car. You curse yourself when you disrespect your parents. God wants us to love our parents, even if they're not worth it, family, even if they disrespectful and they don't love him. If you can love them, then you can love him, family. If you can love somebody that don't love you or made your life a living hell or was never there for you, you can love God. It's the authority base that's set over your head. If you can't respect them, how will you ever have the chance to respect him, family? People is too busy stealing from their parents, lying to their parents, beating their parents, disrespecting their parents, bringing shame on their mothers and their fathers. They don't have no emotional stages of attachment, of love towards their parents. All they have is a rebellion. And we're not talking about just little kids. We're not talking about babies and young people. We're talking about old people too, family. We're talking about people of my age all the way that's older than me, family. He wants us to honor our parents, to love them. If we don't, family, you have been warned. You have been given the truth. If you don't love and respect your parents, all their curses is going to fall on you, family. You're going to have to suffer that, family. 
And if you think I'm lying to you, family, look it up, family. It's going to tell you the same thing. You trade places with your parents, family. If your mama was going to die of some horrific disease, family, and you disrespected that woman, you didn't want to listen to that woman, and you didn't want to have no love for that woman, guess what? You just traded places with your mama. Now you get that same uncurable disease to befall you and your body. We take on curses when we when we dishonor our mother and our father, our dad and our mom. We bring on curses on our own selves, family. So many different people in this world will curse their own selves just by them not honoring their mom and their dad. It's, it, it's, a, it's a damn shame, family. It's a damn shame, family. It is family. And, you know, your brother, I'm not doing you a disservice, but I just came up off the nine o'clock prayer hours. All glory be given to you. And it's already 1125 family. So I'm going to try to get through all of these things. But just remember, you serve a good, great God and we'll be back. We'll pick it up wherever we left off because your father is with me. He gives me my anointed a set time when he wants me to speak, family. I don't jump the gun, family. When he say do something, I do it, family. I'm not a boastful man and be like, well, you know, I want to. It's, it's things that I wanted to preach over that he didn't even want me to preach over those things. He wanted me to preach over this family for a reason. I don't know what the reason is unless the fact that some people are not holding fast to these words of his truth, family. They might be slipping a little bit, family. They might be slipping just a little bit, family, and need all these things to be. Remind it back to them. Remember, this is the week of remembrance. I want you to remember all the promises that your father has given to you and hold fast to these things all day long. I've been reminding him of all the things that he promised me, family. I have family. I have family. I don't have to say them broadcasted across the whole world, but I've been reminding the almighty, the God of grace, the God of glory, the God of truth. The God of salvation, I've been reminding him all the promises that he has given unto me to let him know that I haven't forgot family. And this is once one more thing, once more that he wants me to put before you. This is the week of remembrance. My brothers and my sisters out there in this world, I want you to hold fast to those promises of those truth that he has given unto you for he will make good on all of his promises. Okay, number six, you shall not murder. That's the commandment. You shall not murder. People like today are no different from days of old. They have turned to vicious acts of violence into something that is praised and celebrated through their movies, through music, and it is taught all as a way of, of survival to kill or to be killed. They sing about death through rap. They dance to it. They sing to it. To the valley of the shadow of death brings more pain and misery to the children of the earth. So this is how bad people is nowadays. Your father said you shall not murder. But as you can see with this world, Hollywood advertises murder everywhere. Family, get your get back, get your vengeance, get your payback. Our people is so bad, family. They're up over here singing about murdering people. This people of the world, family, they're rapping about killing people, family. Death is celebrated in this world, family. It is, family. It's all in the in the movies. Any movie that Hollywood shows up, any documentary on Jim Jones, or anybody, those things are celebrated in this world. Murder is celebrated in this world, family. And it's a damn shame, family. I want you to know the difference. They teach this as a way of survival. Kill or be killed. And your your father, he he don't want you to have a murderous mind or a murderous soul in you, family. He don't want you acting like that. He does not want that hatred. Those vicious acts of violence that that celebrated in this world, either through the movies, the music, the rap is taught as a way of survival, family. All of this is the, the valley of the shadow of the death. That's all it is, family. They sing about the valley of the shadow of death. They rap about the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. They watch it on the TV of the valley of the shadow of death, family. It is celebrated, family. It is put hoisted up over people's head as something that needs to be celebrated. And your father said, you shall not murder. 
So all I can ask from my brothers and my sisters out here in this world, if you do not want your soul tainted, watch what you watching. The people that you hang around with, the evil that they have on them, the music that you listen to. All of these carry forth the shadow of the valley of the death family is celebrating the valley of the shadow of death family. That's what is celebrating family. OK, number seven. Now, before before I say this one, I just want to say God said that no fondication family. We all know what this is family to be with somebody that is not your wife. Or your husband and you're in a lucid relationship. Is it not the weekend and people go to clubs and that's all they do inside of the club is find vacation? Stay away from these places, family. Your father said not to be a drunken person. Last time I checked, family, there's a place called a bar and people go in there to get drunk. Stay away from these places. Just because you don't go to bars and you don't go to parties doesn't make you lesser of a man or a woman. That makes you a man or a woman that's trying to be in full compliance of the most high will over their life. Let me reminisce what I just said, family. God said not to be a drunken person and they got bars, family. And them people go up in there and they get wasted, family. They do, family. There's a thing called a club, family. And people, they, they Friday night, family, when they should be at home preparing for the Sabbath. Uh-uh, family, uh-uh. He with his boys. He ironing up his, his pants, family. He getting his favorite shirt on, family. He putting on all his jewelry so he can go out to a place and to where there's nothing but fondication, family. It doesn't make you lesser of a man or of a woman because you don't decide to go to a bar and be a drunkard or go to a damn uh, club to be a damn fondicator, family. Come out of her, family. Come out of here, family. It means that you are a man or a woman that is willing to stand on his word. Number seven, family. You shall not commit adultery. You should not, family. You should not commit adultery. What is adultery, Lennis, is when you married and you be cheating on your wife. Are you married, sister, and you cheating on your husband? That is adultery. They have brought shame. On the holy sanctity of marriage, making it unclean through unfaithfulness where nobody treats nobody right because they. There is no love found, only the lust for someone that is not theirs, destroying lives and families and bringing abominations to the marital bed with debauchery to please their. Sensuality pleasures their covenants to those around them, not thankful for the blessing of their help me. So this is how it, this is how it is. This is why your brother, I, I, I preach all the time that the best people to be tied to, to be joined to is a, a brother or sister of the faith because fake people of God make themselves known because they're wishy-washy. They straddle the fence and their backsliders, family. They can't keep it up. If you're a child of God, you're going to stay in the world. You're not going to be backsliding. You ain't going to be wishy-washy. You're not, family. You're not going to be straddling no fence, family. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be doing that. But people of this world, family, they have desecrated the marital bed with their own lust and their own unfaithfulness of their own, clean, their own cleanliness, family. The, the marital bed have to be clean with things that you're doing to your, your wife or your husband. You hear me, brother? The things that you're doing to your wife, it cannot be the, the excuse me for my tongue twister, debauchery. You can't be worrying about the sensual pleasures of your body. You know what I'm saying? All the time. That becomes an abomination to the marital bed. The things that they do in that bed, we must be holy. But you must understand, you shall not commit adultery. That brings shame on yourself and your spouse, family. You put curses on your spouse by cheating on her. I'm just letting you know that, family. And just because you was the one doing cheating, she's still going to have to pay for that. She still have a penance that she has to pay to the most high God of a crime that you did, brother. Sister, that you did, sister. You making an innocent. That's like shedding innocent blood. That's what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You're making a person pay for a crime that you are doing. There shall not be any adultery at all, family. 
I put it like this, family. If you can't live together and love the one that you live in, what the hell are you doing with that person family what are you doing with them family you're wasting their time and then you're just digging a hole for yourself marriage has to be something that is sanctified that is lift up that is seen as something that is holy that is pure we don't bring any desecration or debauchery to our husbands or our wives or our marital bed family do you hear me brother no debauchery to your wife do you hear me, sister? No debauchery, no abomination to your husband by stepping out and being unfaithful. You shall not commit adultery. OK, let's move to the next one. But you see how people is, family. They can't wait to go to the club so they can give in to their fondication. And then they think if they're not fondicating that there's something wrong. They think they think that them not giving in the fondication makes them a loser, family. They don't want to go to the club and do no fondication. Oh, Mark, you a sap. Oh, you a sucker. Oh, you don't want to go out and hang with us at the, 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 the club and give in to the, all these fondication with all these promiscuous women. The brother have to think about that. He really does. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sis, you don't want to go to the, to the club and give in to fondication so you can dig your own pit to hell. She has to think about that. She really has to. It shouldn't take that long. You know what I'm saying? Stand firm in your belief, family. Don't be dragged out like this world will. This world will drag you out, family. For I already told you, Hezekiah taught us all, being unfaithful comes with a price, family. It comes with a price, family. Number eight. Okay, where was I at? Please excuse me. Uh, I don't have... I didn't get the right, I couldn't find the right pigmentation for it, like, I couldn't find it, family, so I'm, I just had to settle with this one. But, you shall not steal. Family, they be stealing over the phone, they be windling, they be windling people out of their money, especially older people. They still in person, they still over the internet scams, and windles people money away of window of what I'm sorry and window people out of what they work they work so hard for companies banks the government the people you know down the street the people that you go to the store and shop every single day every I'm sorry everybody want everybody wants something for nothing some are too scared to work for what they want so they take thinking no one has seen the despiteful act of theft they think that they will have no one to answer to but what a man sow he will reap so family we already know family that we ain't supposed to be stealing and you know how people is in this world family they some of them are so damn lazy family that they constantly steal and be cursed because anything they steal will be taken from them family it's a shame family you got all these scam artists family they will scam you on the phone they'll scam you in person they'll scam you on the internet to windle you out of your hard work money it doesn't matter that it's the bank it's america bank of america or chase that doesn't matter it doesn't matter that it's your government it doesn't even matter that it's the the people that you know the people down the street or the people that you go shop with there are thieves in this world and they are constantly stealing family constantly taking things that is not theirs family you be thinking you be like well it's a it's a big old institute it's the bank they they ain't gonna steal from me but they showed enough stole they stole enough slap them late charges on your account that made your account go on the red now you owe these people 50 bucks that is stealing family it doesn't matter that it's the government giving you a ticket for some stupid that's still stealing family we are supposed to not steal in no shape form or fashion and whatever that we want we are willing to work hard to get it for the father will bless the labor of our hand. The fruits of our hand will be increased with our hard work, family. These people out in the world, they're too busy trying to corrupt the minds to try to duke and deceive people, especially the old people, family. They, they're, they're bad, family. They they still over the phone, family. I had a, I had last week, family. They called me. They said it's a warrant out for your arrest. Jehosa, they said, Jehosa, it's a warrant out for your arrest. 
the, the IRS, blah, blah, blah. Come send us this. Come send us that. Why is that for? Because people be stealing and they're thieves. They're con artists, family. They're very conniving, family. Very tricky with their words to try to deceive you out of what's hard earned, family. So I suggest to all my brothers and sisters out there, watch these people. Just because you're accustomed to going to that store doesn't mean that they won't shorten you a dollar, a dollar fifty. Two. I don't care if that is Walmart. I don't care that it's Target, family. They still swindlers of your money. Watch these people. Because in the heart of some people, they're thieves, family. They'll be a thief all the way to the day that they leave this world, family, to try to take from you, family. We already know we ain't supposed to steal. We don't get no increase in that. We get curses in that, family. We get stuff taken away from us. But I still want you to watch these other people in this world because they are thieves, family. And they will steal what you work so hard to get, family. We have to be safe, family. We really do, family. Okay, next one. Oh, that was the one. I couldn't find the good pigmentation for this. But thou shall not fall. There's you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. People lie over. People lie as a deflection. The eyes of attention is away from their stuff, thinking that the truth can be buried and hidden when all lies hidden in the dark will be revealed in the light. They run and hide from things they have done, not being men and women to face consequences of their own actions. That's how people are, family. Now, we know, family, we're not going to tell any lies on anybody, family. But the people in this world, family, they live in the darkness and they lie as a deflection to get the eyes of people away from them on that other person so they can be safe. And all of their lies, family, to lie is a deflection, family. You're deflecting. What are you trying to deflect? Little kids are good at that, family. You should know. People don't change just because they was a little kid to a grown person. They still acting like a kid now, family. Your brother tells you all the time, family, just because a person is 20, 30, 40 years old does not mean that you reach maturity, family. Does not, family. Maturity is found in your actions. And just because those people reach a certain age, you would think that it comes with a sense of maturity. It does not. No difference difference than somebody trying to deflect family they've been doing this ever since they was knee high family deflecting all of their problems because they do not want to suffer the consequences of their very actions family we should not bear false witness against our neighbors or anyone but you must be aware of people in this world that use lies as a deflection against the things that they are doing family Somebody coming up lying to you about somebody. You need to be watching what that person is doing because what they are doing. We all know about the devil. Look, look, look about the devil. He does not lie, family. He twists and, and warps and mutilates the truth, family. That's all he does, family. He twists the truth to where he put his own extras in it to where you'll follow what he's doing. That's no different than people, family. They twist and dif di uh, distort and modify the truth. And it becomes into a lie, family, as a form of deflection to lie against their neighbor, to get the eyes of men off of them and what they are doing themselves, family. So what was what was the commandment? You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. OK, last one, family, and I'm going to move to some side notes, but it's already like already got like almost two hours here in the sanctuary all glory be given to the most high yah i guess we will be back sooner sooner than what you expect family you shall not covenant they covenant people's wives they husbands they clothes they jobs they cars they the they work other people I'm sorry. Other people's work things they themselves have not done, not willing to put in the hard work to receive these blessings. So it is a lot of covetous people. 
and you be like, Jehosa, you've been hard on us tonight. If you will really want to see some covetous people, it's a place called a mall, family. It is, family. It's a place called a mall. And if you walk through the walk through the mall, you will see all these covetous people up in there. I want this. I want to look like her. I want her hair. I want his shoes. I want his pants. Oh, I want to look like that. I want this. And then, then you got the other people in the world. They will covetous your wife, your husband, your clothes, your job, your car, your house. Your work, family, all the things that you have built up in this life, they will covet it. But they're not, but them themselves, they're not willing to put in that hard work to receive these blessings, family. You have to be weary of these things. And shouts out to my big brother. You have to be weary of these people, of these things, of being covetous people, especially the people that you bring into your house, family. You might have a, a brother up over there. You bring him into this wife. Now he's infatuated with your wife and he has to have her. Do you hear me, brother? Sister, you might bring a woman to your house and she might get infatuated by your husband and become a covetous person doing everything in the whim of her power to deceive you, to mutilate, to uh, manipulate him, to gain him as a as a trophy, because that's all it is. And the damn shame about covetous people, when they have it, you would think that they will be satisfied with that thing that they coveted. Uh-uh, family. There is nothing on this earth that will please a man or a woman if it not be them, um, I'm sorry, praising the most high God. That's the only thing that will bring comfort to a man or a woman. Empty materialistic things that's in this world will not bring anybody any type of pleasure that's why these covetous people when they finally do obtain these things family they get bored of it and then they're off to the next thing if you want to see uh at least half of the people up in the mall family at least half of them i'm not gonna say all of them family you being too hard on this jehosa i like going to the sports show to get some shoes i wasn't coveting nobody jehosa okay brother okay half of the people up in there at least half of them you want to see some covetous people? Go to the mall, family. You're going to see them walking all through their family, looking you up and down off of what you have, family. When somebody pays too much attention to you and what you're doing and the things that you have, that's a covetous person. Be on the aware. We already we already know we're not covetous people. Whatever we want. We're not willing, we're not scared to go out in this world and bust our hands to the concrete to work as hard as we need to do to get these things. But the rest of the world is not and they want what you have. And just because you've been in that relationship for 10 years does not mean, sis, that she don't want your husband. Brother, brother, just because y'all been boys for 10 years now. And you just got married to that fine woman does not mean that he don't want your wife. Be careful on these covetous people that you allow to come into your home and to around your circle of conference. That's all I can plead with you, family. I saw all I can plead. And since I didn't even this was supposed to be a side note day for today, I'll just give you one side note for today. Side note for the night. Let me change my pick. I'm sorry, family. I'm sorry, family. You know, I got to change my pick. And you know, it's all about that fire, family. You know what I'm saying? It's all about that fire, family. I told you the most scariest thing in this world is to have the Lord tell you to have Jesus Christ sit there and tell you to turn from me. I do not know you. That's scary, family. That's scarier than any demon that could crawl out the pit of hell, family. I want you to ingrain that into your own self. Side note for the night. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Son, no. Yes, it is. He who lives forever and he who has created all things, when he says to you, when he asks you a question, don't answer immediately. Take your time to answer. Joseph! Joseph, why you say that on your side, no, brother? Why you say that? Now, you already know, family. I probably didn't go over this, but family, when when God asks you a question, he likes to be answered in the spirit. Jehoshaphat, what do you mean, brother? He wants you to pray on it, family. He does. He wants you, he wants to answer. He wants you to answer him by prayer, family. 
Okay, that's a given. You know that now. But what I'm sitting here today and I'm telling you, family, when God asks you a question, he asks anything of you, family, anything. Don't be so immediately to give him an answer. You might come across as being stupid in front of God, family. You might come across as being covetous to God. You might come across as being jealous, uh, uh, self-seeking to him, family. So take some time, brother. Take some time. Even brother, 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 even if it took a whole day for you to answer him, I would rather for you to sit there and think about what you're going to say to him. than you just jumping off at your mouth and saying anything that comes to your mind. You might lose a blessing. You might hinder yourself or you might come off as a confused person to God family. He wants a good answer. He does. And we all know family. When God came to King Solomon in his dream and he presented himself and he asked Solomon, Solomon, you are my you are my anointed. Whatever you want, Solomon, I'll give to you. Solomon didn't sit up there and be sitting up. Well, you know, God, give me the car, you know, give me a million dollars. He didn't do, he, he didn't say he didn't answer God with a selfish answer. Family, when God asks you about something, he wants you to think about other people, family. He does, family. When God came up to you right now and he asked you, child, what do you want from me? Whatever comes out of your mouth, you better answer him in the spirit. The demons don't have to know about this, family. They don't have to know about this. This is concealed. But I'm asking you, my brothers. I'm asking you, my sisters. Don't answer him immediately. Give it some time. You might come off as being stupid, brother. You might come off as being kind of coveted in your wants. You might come off as being jealous of being envious of being conceited family and your prayers to him. A lot of people do each and every day. God ask them something. They start talking about what they want. God ask them something. They start talking about what they want them, what they want him to do to other people, family. You know what I'm saying? So fall back, family, fall back, family. Take your time, family. Don't answer him immediately, family. Give it some time to think, to ponder. Yah, the Lord of hosts, the God of glory came to me and asked me this. And he wants an answer, family. He wants an answer, family. Once more again, the, no religion. This ain't got nothing to do with a traditional religion. This ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about the most high Yah delivering a message to you. And he's asking you something, family. He is, brother. And he wants an answer. But you cannot be so quick to give him an answer. You have to think, my brothers. You have to think, my sisters, or you might come across as being conceited or conniving. Or some people, they come off as being foolish when he asks them stuff like this, family. So I'm asking you, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, to take your time and give him a good answer. And your prayers must not be absorbed all around about you. It's not about you. It's about who can you afflict to make it into his kingdom. It's about who can you help to get closer to him. It's about who can you teach to gain more faith about him. Who can you bless, my brothers? Who can you bless, my sisters, with something that some type of substance that they need in this world? So it's not all about you. When God asks you something, he's not going to hear about you. He's going to want to hear about who can you help, family? That's what I'm asking you into this day. Side note for the night. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, side note. Yes, it is. Now, your brother, I got to get going for tonight, family, because it's already going to be 12 o'clock in the morning, family. But you serve a good, great God. And like I said before, we'll be back. If you want to do anything for your brother Jehoshaphat Israel. I would like for you to come to this nine o'clock prayer hour to be assembly in the spirit with the saints across this whole great world that God has made each and every day, family, from Sunday night, family, all the way to Friday night. Come at this nine o'clock, come at this 10 o'clock, come at this 11 o'clock to be in spirit, saying so many different prayers on so many different people trapped up in bondage, so many people different loss, so many different people sick, so many people fall on hard times, your family and your situation. We'll pray for you. You will pray for us. We'll pray for we'll pray all together and we all be blessed, family. Now, if you can put your hands in the air.
to all of Zion, Father, we come to you humble before your day and, and glad heart and glad spirit that you have given us this day to show ourselves before you and your light by being right, by being honest, by being honorable in all of our actions. Father, I ask all these things in the name of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I ask, Father, that you bless the fruits of their minds to keep their minds witty and strong. Always seven steps ahead of any principality of evil that would try to inflict me and my brothers and sisters in this world. Father, I ask that you bless the fruits of their body. I ask that you keep their body strong, very vibrant, the youth of their younger days to knock down any pain or any sickness or any disease in their body and give them the youthful actions of their youth father when they used to run free in your world father for all my brothers and sisters who have not felt your presence father i ask that you knock them down father i ask that you knock them down with your presence of love wherever they might be in this world so they can understand how powerful you are yah how how great you are yah and how much you love them yah wherever they might be in the name of yahshua hamashiach Father, I ask that you bless their sons, their daughters, their they wives, their husbands, their whole house covered in the blood of Yahshua, which is the precious lamb. Father, I ask that you rain down all your mercy, all of your grace, all of your favor, all of your blessings, all of your protection, all of your hand of preservation, all of your knowledge, all of your wisdom be rained down upon us to receive this great burning love. This great burning fear of you, Father, I ask that it draws more people into your kingdom in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach to be part of your good grace, of your good covenant, of your will. For your will allowed us to see this day. For you are a great God. Blessed be your will. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your righteousness and your mercy forever in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. For you are worthy, Father. And I thank you, all glory be given to Yah, all glory be given to Yah, for he is worthy. Blessed be his name forever. Thank you to all my brothers and sisters who have prayed for me, but I got to get going, family. It's late at night, and like I said, family, he gave me the will, we'll be back. I thank you and I love you to all my brothers and sisters who have prayed for me. Don't forget, come get yourself some of this nine o'clock prayer hour and to be a part of this great spirit. To be a part of this assembly in spirit family now peace and blessings to peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters in the name of yahshua hamashiach the precious lamb until next time family until next time all glory be given to yah for he is the only one who is worthy blessed be his name forever